Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for the fourth and final part of the Q&A. So uh, let me get my hat on. Oops, adjust that a little bit. And uh, let's knock this out and finish this up. All right, first question. Since I only do closed grip incline bench press for chest, am I leading to any muscle imbalances by not doing flat bench in a type of fly? Uh, personally, I felt that incline closed grip bench press has more carryover to assist uh, with push pressing. Okay, uh, all right, I want to clarify this for you. you. You lied to me, but you didn't know that you lied to me, and that's okay. Uh, if the only chest exercise you're doing is the incline close grip, then you can't be push pressing. The push press is a chest exercise. The push press is actually a pretty decent chest exercise. Uh, <laughs> I just want to put that out there so that you understand that. The push press absolutely works your chest if done correctly. You come all the way down on it, push press is a good chest exercise. Uh, now, as far as this goes, are you going to have any muscle imbalances? Uh, not in your chest, probably not. The incline closed grip bench press is actually a fantastic chest builder. In fact, for some guys who struggle with chest development, either doing the incline closed grip or doing incline with dumbbells so that you can get a deeper stretch and a longer range of motion is oftentimes a good corrective exercise for people who have a lagging chest who struggle to build it on the flat bench. Uh, so in this case, you're really performing an exercise that I recommend uh, for a lot of guys whose chest is lagging. They're struggling with chest development. So no, you're not going to get any imbalances at all. Now you combine the fact that you're doing a closed grip incline with the push press. Um, as long as you're getting strong on both and your workload is sufficient, I don't see any reason why you can't develop a complete thick full chest with what you're trying to do. Um, maybe even from an aesthetics and bodybuilding perspective, but from a sports perspective and an actual uh, functional strength perspective, those two exercises should cover all your bases. I think you're good to go there. Uh, if you want to do something else, consider some dips maybe, but they probably aren't necessary for uh, what you're trying to do uh, unless you're trying to bodybuild or something. And you didn't mention that. You talked about carry over to the push press. Uh, so keep doing what you're doing, brother. All right, next question. Hey Jason, while on a cut, should my training goal be to maintain my number rather than grow? Um, I consider myself an intermediate, decline bench 125 for five, squat 205 pre-surgery, now 175, deadlift 250 pre-surgery, now 215. Although I have uh, lagging hamstrings and rear delts, so add, add a glute ham raises and face pulls three times a week. By the way, this is a female, if I recall. So yeah, a 125 decline for five and uh, a 250 pound deadlift, definitely an intermediate. All right, what I would say for you when cutting, uh, honestly, your novice lifters can usually increase strength when cutting. The morbidly obese can in increase strength when cutting. This individual is neither one of those. Uh, so for her, I'm gonna say a solid, well solid intermediate lifter uh, who's wanting to cut, no, you're probably not gonna gain strength, you're probably not gonna grow. Now, some of your exercises, some of your exercises, the ones that you have the most wiggle room to improve on, maybe for technique reasons, neural efficiency reasons, you might be able to increase those on a slow cut. So if you are able to increase some of those exercises, then by all means do so. But when you're cutting and losing body fat, particularly an intermediate who isn't obese, don't bank on gaining strength. Do your best to maintain the strength that you have and accept the fact that you might not improve on strength. Now, if you're able to, then don't let me discourage you. If you got a couple of exercises that you can improve upon, by all means, then, then do so if you're physically able. But don't count on it happening. Usually a successful cut, a very successful cut, is when you lose the amount of body fat that you want to lose while maintaining all of your strength and your muscle mass. That's your best case scenario most of the time. That is considered a perfect cut, right? You kept everything that you gained, and only lost the body fat that you wanted to lose. That, that's an ideal goal. Most people at your point in the game are simply not going to get bigger and stronger when they're, they're in a caloric deficit. But that's okay, because if you can keep what you had, then you can go back to progressing once you're done with the cut. Uh, so nothing wrong with that. All right, next question. Hey Jason, what does low back pain mean when deadlifting? It's not terrible pain, but it's annoying. My calories are being restricted right now. Uh, I ran strong lifts for two years consistently and made great gains. Now I'm using Mad Cal's 5x5. Five five. Uh, right now I'm taking a deload for two weeks, so reduce the weight by 30%. Thanks. Okay, um, 
lower back pain when deadlifting is usually a sign that you are starting to overreach that you're pushing your back too hard you're starting to get that cramping that's how i describe it and usually uh, the first signs of it when you know you're, you're on the edge of overreaching and particularly like your lower back is under recovering uh, to the tonnage you're subjecting it to you'll notice it usually when you're driving home like after you've deadlifted sometimes you can't do other standing exercises right you'll try to do curls standing and your lower back cramps all right that means you're on that edge or you finish deadlifting and 20 minutes later 30 minutes later you're in your car and your lower back starts to hurt while you're driving all right that's a sign uh, that you're starting to overreach. It might be time for you to consider a deload. It might be time for you to just deload the deadlift and back off some of your lower body exercises, or at least the stuff that hits the lower back, that's what you should consider. It, it just means that you're reaching that point of overreaching. Uh, it might be time for you to go ahead and back it down and notch. go ahead and take a deload. Um, usually be what I would recommend, as well as make sure that your mobility and everything is up to par, your hamstring mobility and everything else. All right, next question. Jason, I'm a 21-year-old female and I love your channel. I have a question about not getting too bulky. Should women do lower reps or high reps to lose fat and tone? I've been doing low reps for almost two years and I don't like the way I look. Even though I feel like I have gained a lot of strength, I still feel like my legs look bulky, uh, especially my quads, and I don't have abs either. Uh, it could be body dysmorphia because my blood work is perfect and my weight is normal and I'm healthy. Did I gain too much muscle or just not lose enough fat yet? Um, all right, women don't need to worry so much about getting too bulky. You're not going to get too bulky without drugs. Uh, and low reps and high reps both produce similar amounts of muscle growth when tonnage is similar. Neither one is better than the other. Uh, I've provided plenty of data for that recently. Uh, what I would say for most women, though, um, I like to see women train with lower reps, usually for, for weight loss. And the reason being, lower reps gives you more strength with similar amounts of muscle. If you're able to lift heavier weights, just in my experience, a lot of women uh, will find losing weight a little bit easier. It's like we, uh, we've done with Brittany, and like I've explained with women in the past, usually the stronger you get as a woman, usually the easier it is for you to lose weight, quite frankly, because um, your overall metabolic rate tends to be higher. So I like to see that. Uh, women just training with lower reps in general and big barbell exercises, uh, particularly for controlling body composition and body weight because the extra metabolism that they get from it really just seems worth it. Uh, and just my personal experience, my anecdote working with women over the years, women who get stronger faster find it easier uh, to drop the body weight that they want to drop, usually while eating more food. They just do better overall. Uh, we can argue about the scientificness of that all day long. People argue with me on that, and that's fine. Um, just going off my experience there. But you know what? They can do fine with high reps. But I would say if you feel like your legs are too bulky, but you, you know, like you said, you don't see abs, it could just be that you're also storing extra body fat on your legs. And if you end up dieting and losing five pounds, you might feel that your legs are less bulky. And like you said, it could be a body dysmorphia issue also. Uh, it could be that. But, you know, if you feel like your legs are too bulky, keep in mind, weight from muscle is still going to be smaller and more dense than weight from fat. Uh, if you feel like your legs are too bulky, um, restrict your calories. Add a little more cardio, drop four or five pounds, and then see how they look. Uh, that's really all you can do. I wouldn't quit training my legs, though, because you're going to find it easier to control your weight and be healthier and live longer and have all these health benefits if you keep your legs strong. Um, so, you know, at a certain point, you've got to step back and ask what's more important to me, my overall health or feeling like I have slightly smaller legs. And like I said, ultimately, you can lose more size off of your legs if you feel they're too big by just dropping a few pounds of body fat. Uh, that would be the healthier of the two approaches for your long-term fitness. All right, uh, next question and uh, last question of the week. Hi, Jason. I do your 5x5 five five program. I love it. But I lose the bar path when I do high bar squats. I've seen your video on how to squat uh, where you say that what to do is to lose a bar path. Oh, what to say if you lose a bar path, but I tried the low bar squat with normal weight for the first time and it felt so much more natural for me. And I didn't lose the bar path at all. Is it okay to low bar squat instead of high bar on your 5x5 five five program? Would you recommend it? All right, normally I'm a big fan of the high bar squat. I think for overall athleticism, the high bar squat's better. Uh, I tend to recommend low bar squat more for power lifters who are going to compete in powerlifting. But if you personally are running my program there 
and you find that your personal biomechanics are more geared to the low bar squat, that you just find it more comfortable, it feels more natural for your body structure, and that is what's going to keep you squatting consistently, pain-free, and safely, then low bar squat. Because I would rather see you low bar squat, even if I feel the high bar squat is 1% better. And when I do say it's better, I do mean 1% better, not amazingly better for overall athletics and fitness than the, the low bar squat. So when I say the high bar squat is better, it's by a tiny fraction, almost to the point of just being opinion, a subjective opinion. So again, I would rather you low bar squat if that's what you're comfortable with because at least you're going to be squatting on a proper program with progressive overload. And if you feel that you can keep the bar path more consistent and it feels more natural, you're probably going to be less likely to get hurt. And I would much rather see someone running one of my programs do something that's a more natural movement for them than the one I prescribe, uh, a different variation that feels more natural to them, that they can do properly and maintain a proper technique easier, I would rather see them do that because uh, you're just less likely to get hurt and you're going to be more consistent and you're probably going to progress better on it. So if that's the case, then go ahead and low bar squat. Don't worry about what I say about the high bar squat. You know, don't worry about it in that case. You do uh, the, the method, the variation of the exercise that you know that you've got the better bar path in that feels natural for your biomechanics. By all means, do so. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.